Gail. We're on. Thank you, Gail. Good evening. Welcome to our regularly scheduled meeting of Town Council of September 5th, 2017. Mike, uh, really, if you could leave. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, before we begin, just uh, want to take a liberty to ask for a, a moment of silence on behalf of retired uh, police chief William Knapp, who passed away this past week. Uh, Bill served the town of Wethersfield since 1958. Um, dear friend of mine and friends of many of our counselors uh, here at the dais who have known Bill for many, many years. A wonderful human being and a, a, a fine police officer uh, who uh, is going to be dearly missed by many, many people. Thank you. <clears throat> we have a hearing item this evening. So uh, before regular public comment, uh, we have a hearing about a resolution of the town of Wethersfield approving the issuance by the Public Finance Authority of Wisconsin on behalf of bonds uh, for the Mosaic. Uh, anybody here this evening? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. Roll call, apologize. Councilor Bellow is unable to attend. Councilor Hemman may be late. Councilor Hurley? Here. Councilor Latina? Here. Councilor Martino? Here. Councilor Rell? Here. Councilor Spinella? Here. Deputy Mayor Barry? Here. And Mayor Montaneri? Here. Thank, Thank you. you. Sorry about that. Um, back to the public comment on the, on the hearing item. Anyone wishing to speak this evening on the hearing item for the approval of Wisconsin bonds for the Housing Authority? I will say this. Uh, Andrea Ferrucci from Mosaic is here when we get to the business part of the item. Should be here to answer any questions. Terrific. Thank you, Jeff. Anyone here wishing to speak on that item? Seeing none, I'll declare the hearing closed. Um, and we'll go to regular public comment. Regular public comment this evening on any item of interest? Anyone wishing to speak? Jim? There's a huge audience on TV right tonight. You hope. <laughs> Jim Woodworth, uh, 33 Mill Street. I'm here to uh, invite you all to come down to the Wethersfield Cove on uh, Saturday morning, September 23rd at 8 o'clock, if possible, 8 to 11, to help clean up the cove. It's, uh, it's our iconic uh, place, and yet we've done a nice job with the park, uh, but uh, there's a lot of people that leave a lot of trash, and we've neglected the back side. And I wanted to uh, particularly thank uh, Councilman Hurley for joining us back there next last year, being the first uh, council member. Uh, Donna's not here, but she's been there. This is a 21st annual cleanup, but I think Donna's been there for 20 years uh, every year. Um, and uh, it's organized watershed wide by the Connecticut River uh, Con uh, Connecticut River Conservancy, new name, and uh, Lower River Steward Alicia Sheramut, um, with the help of the Metropolitan District Commission, Julie McMa McLaughlin uh, provides uh, gloves and pickers and other tools and trash bags and, and snacks, and that's really great. Um, and uh, if you come, you can, you can either do that trip way around back by car, or you can take a boat over to the other side where uh, it's just the effluvia from 91. Um, you can uh, go under the underpass out to the river and see our, it's really outside of the meadows, Weathersfield's access to the beauty of the, and grandeur of the Connecticut River if you're not on a boat. Um, and I'd like to, uh, ho hoping this year that we'll have a special focus on what's at the end of the parking lot where the guardrail is, which has kind of gotten a little overgrown, unfortunately with poison ivy. I'm a native plant, 
believer, but except for that one species that's so annoying and so invasive, um, but even worse than the poison ivy is the accumulation of graffiti under the highway. And I've uh, written to DOT and then uh, uh, Jeff Bridges, our town manager, has called them to ask them to come down and see what they could do. And they actually, I don't know if that's part of the renovation of I-91 south of, of the cove, but they actually painted over all the graffiti on Elm Street uh, underpass. And so I'm hoping they could do that before we get all those volunteers, some of them under age 17, without parental permission to see the X-rated uh, graffiti there. I hope they don't have to look at that. Um, but it's my belief, one of the frustrating things about these cleanups is that after the cleanup, a week after someone's been out on, on the river partying, or even some fishermen throwing their stuff around, and when volunteers have just cleaned it up. And uh, I'm thinking that's partly because it seems like such an anonymous place, like a back alley someplace, partly because of the graffiti, partly because of the overgrowth of the poison ivy. And uh, if we could kind of make that over the next period of time, uh, a town, a place that's welcoming to the town, to uh, members of the, uh, residents of the town, including uh, painting a mural where that graffiti was or is um, with the help of art students and community artists and so forth. Maybe even as uh, Phil Lohman suggested to me that we paint the asphalt too. Paint some kind of thing that kind of draws you around till you see the mural and then continuing to dream and think about grants that we might get somewhere having uh, informational signs kind of on the heritage walk uh, level talking about the, the environment. We have the Clean Water Act, MDC might contribute to say, hey, we're actually cleaning this thing up. A couple of years from now, it's not going to have any combined sewer overflow after half a billion dollars and what, you know. But anyway, um, the Connecticut Audubon Society just designated the Great Meadows, including the Cove, as an important bird area. Um, <clears throat> and there's a whole bunch of criteria, but the fact that there's a resident eagle in Wethersfield, right on the other side of the entrance to the Cove, as well as five, at least last spring, there were five great blue heron nests. Um, the comeback of the great blue heron, which according to some research I read, um, before they blasted 91 through there, there was one of the finest heron, heron rookeries on the river, quote unquote. Um, so things are coming back. Of course, we have the uh, airport uh, tree uh, uh, pruning type thing going on, which you can see from that place too. But anyway, getting out on the river, it's, a, it's a kind of a world-class fishing place. You get uh, you know people from all around fishing out there, some of whom will clean up after themselves. And I put out a little sign that said, uh, and it lasted for two months. And I don't know if the mosquitoes had more effect than the sign, but it said, uh, uh, "Let's try to keep this beautiful place clean. Carry out what you, whether you're partying or fishing. Carry out what you carry in, and clean up after the slobs who don't." And uh, the sign didn't get ripped down, it fell down after a couple of months. But so I think there's hope that that we could uh, build on something and get some community uh, uh, benefits out of this. But anyway, Saturday morning, September 23rd, 8 to 11. And come on down. And for all you people out in TV land, come on down. Thanks. Thank you. Other public comment? Good evening, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. Seems like a long time since you've had a meeting, but maybe it hasn't been. Maybe it just seems that way. The 
bad news keeps dribbling out of Connecticut's capital regarding budgets, regarding some, some saying that they're going to be scaling back. Schools are scaling back. I was wondering how Weathersfield is doing, if they're scaling back, or are they just going the way that Hartford goes, just keep spending. Um, it doesn't appear as though this state is going to be able to pony up the kind of money they've been ponying up. What I'm reading, the governor claims he's increased handouts to the, stat, to the towns and, and, and cities and uh, to the tune of 20 some percent over the last few years. And he thinks that now you need to live within a budget, which I agree. I think you've all been spoiled. You've been spoiled with borrowed money. And that's what it's all been about, borrowed money. Just look at the track record of our current administration up in Hartford, state capital. When he came in, it was $12 billion in, in long-term debts. Now, I'm sorry, $62 billion. Now it's $74 billion and some change. Tacked on $12 billion in expenses. And by feeding the towns money that they didn't have up there, they just kept building up that, that debt. Now they continue looking for more ways to tax us. I wouldn't doubt if they're going to be taxing our heartbeats pretty soon. We also have the disgraceful city of Hartford that's still sitting on the fence regarding bankruptcy something that they deserve very well. When you go back and look at the, the kinds of salaries and the ways that they paid their people up against what the towns pay, there's a huge difference, absolute huge difference, which has driven the city of Hartford to where it is. We. Um, you know, there's an article in the paper just the other day about these uh, pensions that the people are now going to be collecting because they were exempt from something that Bronin had done uh, to a lot of people, but then 40-some people are now going to be able to pick up some, some nice fancy money. And of course, when they go broke, the city, we're going to have to bail them out. It's the same idea as we the fools we are, the fools of our administrators here in town by taking a high school and expanding it 30%. When we all knew all along that student population was going to decrease. But in Weathersfield, it won't decrease. We'll have a nice high school. We will have a lot of empty seats. And we'll be importing kids from, as we're told, from Harvard. That's what I see happening. And we'll end up picking up some small change from the state for handling those children, and we'll be paying the rest of the freight. We, we're destined mayor. You've been, you've been mayor for a few years, four or five, I don't know how many years, four years. You've been on the council for a long time. And our economy has not gone anywhere except down. There's an article in the Hartford Current this week, Sunday's paper, regarding UTC, and they found the fountain of, the fountain of youth by millennials, and hiring them and bringing them in and, and getting them working into their system. And of course, they, they talk about how a lot, of, a lot of young millennials have left. They talk about 39,000 people had left. The biggest thing that caught my eye, Mayor, and this whole article was a little piece. It said, the state is expected to grow just 0.4% nation, uh, compared to 4% nationwide. The state of Connecticut is going to grow only 0.4% between the years 2000, I believe it is 15, and 2020. 
So we still have some more years of bad times. It's only going to grow 0.4%, whereas the rest of the country has grown 4%. Many times what Connecticut has grown. And look at the dollars that we have dumped, gone in debt for, and we come up with 0.4%. That's, that's an indication of your, your business, your, 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 the way you people run business. 0.4%. And of course, there's a lot of other bad things happening too. But I think to be, keep grinding on them, I don't know if we're going to get anywhere because we need to find a way to cut back on our expenses. And our expenses start, our largest expenses are school system. We need to find ways of gathering up more money and not from the taxpayers, from the users. You have a lot of using going on in our town school system. And user fees need to be propped up. Look, we, you, you're, you're financing again for the second time, just to show how bad business people you are. Mortgage field, which is now called bankrupt field, as far as I'm concerned, is being mortgaged twice. 14 year run, you had no money. You had nobody, you had people collecting money, but it all went elsewhere. And here we are told that we need to replace the field and there's no money in the bucket. $17,000 you got from the school system to pay for a consultant. That didn't pay for the turf. $1.2 million of turf and, and that whole gizmo that goes with it. And the second time around, we're going we're to finance it. That shows the kind of business people we have here, Mayor. The bad people. There should be no respect for you folks at all. You've driven us into the ground with a 0.4% increase going to the year 2020. And here we are. Up, we're all in hock. Towns are in hock, the state of Connecticut's in hock. They can't even pass a budget. And here we are wondering what's going to happen next because our great leaders have given us a 0.4% increase in our future and our business here in the state of Connecticut. Terrible. Thank you very much, Mayor. I'll be back. Tom. Good evening, Tom Mazzarella, <clears throat> 600 Walker Hill Road. I uh, had the opportunity to walk over to the high school this weekend. A whole bunch of activity. Looked like there was, uh, I'm going to guess, a girls' soccer tournament Saturday. Saw buses from all over the state there, Westport and so on. Not sure exactly what the event was, but a uh, big crowd, a lot of people. Uh, turf came out, appears to be beautiful. Um, on my way over, I walked over, uh, I, I approached the school from J Street heading north on the east side and there's sidewalks that go in front of each house until you get to the what appears to be the property line of the high school. And there the sidewalk stops and there's a what appears to be an asphalt remnant of a sidewalk and that goes along the uh, adjacent to the parking lot there uh, up to the stop sign. So my point is we, we talked about walkability a couple weeks ago in a, in a grant that was being applied for um, for pedestrian safety and so forth but here's this uh, beautiful complex that we just finished and if you're walking down that sidewalk or if you happen to be in a wheelchair uh, you're out of luck because you're dead-ended into grass so your only 
option would be to walk down someone's driveway and cross the street diagonally over to the to the other side. Well, I think I'm not sure if that's a punch list item that just slipped between the cracks or if I don't know what the reason is, but it seems to me we ought to be able to walk on a sidewalk and down a handicap ramp uh, to that intersection. I don't know how the kids would walk. I guess they just cross the street wherever. Anyways, uh, the uh, utility pole at that intersection also has an electrical cable conduit that's sticking out about a foot and a half appears to me that it wasn't completed. You know, maybe that's another punch list item that could be looked at. Uh, anyways, going over to the back to the field, I'm going to repeat a little bit of what Mr. Young just said. Uh, it's a beautiful field. It costs us a lot of money. And uh, I had brought up some questions about how that field's going to get paid for maintenance-wise and uh, gate proceeds. Um, I don't know if anything could be done about that, but it uh, seemed to me it was not a very clear issue uh, who collects fees. Was that tournament this weekend, for example, did the participants have to, each team have to contribute for the use of the field, or was it considered a scholastic event and no fees? Uh, if those fees were collected, um, by who and where do they go, and will they be used for future maintenance? Might take a little bit off a of replacement when we replace the field in uh, 10 or 15 years. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Other public comment? George? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. George A. Rue, 956 Cloverdale Circle. Uh, I'm going to speak into this microphone, and I'm doing it very purposefully, because one of my comments tonight is about one of only a very few number of negative ones. When you guys speak, please speak into this high tech. I was watching the council meeting at my computer, couldn't hear a thing, just mumble, mumble, mumble. And I complaints again and again and again. I think, you know, you need a big sign for that. That, that said, try to keep that in mind. Uh, I've got a couple of things. A couple of things. One is I'd like to comment on the post-Charlottesville vigil that Paul attended. I really was very pleased when I saw the fact that he had gone there. I think I've tried to make it pretty clear <clears throat> the worries that I have about my country evolved beyond Connecticut. I think the things that I worry about are going to be far more devastating or can be far more devastating than anything that can happen within the state. A couple of things that Paul said that I underlined as I was grateful of the fact that our community could come out and denounce what I think is a very dangerous representation of bigotry and racism. And that came from our esteemed leader. And later on, he talks about, uh, makes another comment, people are troubled by what's happening, Montanari said. What troubles me is that we seem to be a country very, very divided. And that kind of saddens me. This is not something that I'm going to have to live with for a very long period of time. You all know I'm pretty up there in age with a couple of three, four years, and I'll be in my new residence behind the church down in Old Wethersfield. But I, I wanted to share that thought with you. I'd be very interested, Paul. Were there any other representatives of our council present at that meeting, at that vigil with you? 
If you were, just raise your hand and say, yeah, I was there. Obviously, no one was. Okay, that answers that question. Well, George, I will say I was planning on attending, and I got tied up with a family commitment that night. Yeah, I, I, I understand those things. It's right and, across the street from me. Yeah, so. no, I, I understand that, uh, Mike. And uh, it was a good intention, but there's an old saying that I sort of remember somewhere along the line, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And there, a lot of our government in Washington has been criticized. I want to do this, and I truly believe that you probably would have. Yes, I, I'd like to believe that. And, but nevertheless, this is how it affected me. This, is, this was my impression. Mr. Rue, some of us were out of state on vacation with family. Yeah, understandable, 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 understandable. And I wasn't casting any aspersions. I just wanted to know whether anybody was there. The fact that you responded <laughs> suggests to me, this simple folk, that, you know, maybe if you'd been home, you would have been there. You know, that's, I'm sure. That, I'm just sharing what my observation was. I'm looking at the paper, and I don't usually come up with a bunch of clip outs from the paper and make comment on them. But I, 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 I want to make sure that all of you, understand the level of concern that I have for my country and my flag. That's why we're here. Yeah, you, I beg your pardon? I said that's why we're all here. Well, if I were assured of that, I wouldn't be here saying stuff. I said, I said local, you know, government, all politics starts at the local level. All, lo all politics is local. And when you see and what I see happening to our country, I'm very nervous about it. And I don't see any evidence on a local level that there is that great concern. I saw, I've seen Trump signs by council persons during the election. And that, I, that is something beyond my comprehension. But that's not why I wanted to hammer away. Uh, another thing I, I would just, let me get my notes here so I keep this straight. Uh, OK, next comment was the pond. And I'm smiling from ear to ear. And I would like to, Tony's probably going to report on it. But I tell you, I have been very, very impressed with the work that the contractor has done, the work that Daryl, uh, that Derek has put into the thing, and the, and the supervision that I have observed by the town engineering staff on doing this project. Uh, we've had a lot of visitors. And I could almost start a little tour guide system because I know as much as, probably know more about that pond than most anybody. But it's, to me, it's, 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 it's not completely done yet. The weather has slowed things up. But it, I think it's something that we can be proud of. And I've got a few minor things that got to be tended to, but we'll take that up, uh, you know, subsequently. They got to be repaired by the town. But anyway, so that's that item. The, other thing I think was the primary motivator for me to come tonight were the ladies who spoke at the last council meeting. There were some five ladies spoke, and they spoke in terms of, and I had to get this from my, I, I, I don't think I was here. I was watching it on TV or something. I got the feeling that they, they were talking about a subject that I believe that I had addressed earlier in the year, maybe a couple of months back. And it had to do with ICE and the fact that the, that the governor, I believe, as, as, I, as I recall, wrote a letter to all of our local governments and to the police departments that he was encouraging them not to get involved with ICE and that not to turn over so-called illegals or whatever you want to call them. Uh, and as I listen to it and as I follow this particular issue and as I look at 800,000 people that our great leader wants to ship off to someplace, the only thing I can think of that was worse, is worse in my life, was what Hitler was doing to the Jews in Germany. And that to me, it's beyond my comprehension that we could even be thinking about this kind of stuff. Anyway, my council would, I would encourage that this council either the majority or preferably all of you, pass a resolution like those ladies had suggested. Is it meaningful? Yeah, it, it helps. I think it can, be, it can reassure people, and there are many, and I know of some, that are really very nervous about where our country is going on this issue. The, uh, the, 
the, uh, some of the comments that were made by people draw for a few things in my own mind. My father came to this country in 1910 or thereabouts. And that was a long time ago. And uh, as I recall him telling me, he slept in doorways in New York. I think he said he had either $5 or $10. It was a fortune that he had with him. He, uh, whether he came legally or illegally, at that time, the words on the Statue of Liberty had some meaning. And he came to this country, got himself organized, and, and made out reasonably well, okay? The point that I'm making here is one of the speakers who had ancestors come in 1848, and they lived by the rules. Well, I'm no historian per se, but I would seriously question whether there were any rules in 1848. They were still, if my memory serves me, we were still importing slaves in 1848, our country. And if we weren't importing them, we sure had them. I don't know whether we complied with what the English had said, they're not going to involve, get involved with the slave trade anymore. But that, you know, so when people say, we, we followed the rules, and if they don't belong here, we should throw them out. <coughs> That's Hitler-type thinking. Jews didn't belong to Germany, you've got to throw them out. And when I hear that, and I see that in my own country, it unsettles me no end. It unsettles me no end. As I recall, and I'm older than, most, than anybody here, so I can recall call some of this even as a relatively young man. One of the things that people who had to go through Ellis Island, and I had two half-brothers and two half-sisters went through Ellis Island and came in because my father was here and he had left his wife and died and so forth and so on. But in, in any event, there was a term that was applied to a great many people who arrived in this country. They had a ticket, they had a little bit of money, but they were what was described as without papers. That was the way they described these people. They were without papers. Just like these people who, I mean, this is a, a great and a big country. And when we start thinking about getting all excited and we're gonna make jobs for everybody by throwing 800,000 people, people who've lived in this country and have grown up in this country, anybody who even thinks about this, even anybody who's associated with this in any way, shape or form, I can't imagine how you can look in the mirror at night. I have a hard time with this. And in post-World War II, our borders were thrown open to just about everybody. Germans, Italians, Poles, people from all over, people who had really suffered during the war. And I don't believe a one of you have seen it firsthand and smelled it firsthand. But I share that with you and some of my fellow citizens, who I know are just not old enough. And my generation is just about dying out. There's not going to be many of us left very shortly. Okay. I think I said what I wanted to say, mostly. I'd like to share one other point with you. And I picked this up also from a guy by the name of Miller in Washington. Oh, he seems like a really bright guy, a real nice personality, you know. And somebody mentioned the words that are, and that are engraved on the Statue of Liberty. And they were written by a gentleman by the name of Emma Lazarus. When I saw Emma right first, I said, Emma? I thought a man wrote it, but that's his name, Emma. And he wrote a little sonnet, and I'm going to read it. I like people to think about it. I like my friends in the community to think about it. Because we've got people in this community that are scared to death about what's going to happen. What's going to happen to their kids? What's going to happen? You're going to throw them out? We're not going to, we're not going to do a number of other things. We're not going to help people in, 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 in Texas, but we're going to build that wall. And there's a mentality here that is beyond me. But anyway, the words from the Statue of Liberty. And he was comparing this thing in a little sonnet to the Colossus of Rhodes. 
Not like the brazen giant of Greek fame, with conquering limbs stanced astride from land to land. Here at our sea-washed sunset gates shall stand a mighty woman with a torch whose flame is the imprisoned lightning and her name mother of exiles. From her beacon hand blows worldwide welcome. Her mild eyes command the air-bridged harbor that twin, of that twin cities frame. And the final paragraph of this little sonnet is mostly a sonnet of Statue of Liberty, I think. Keep ancient lands your storied pomp, cries with silent lips. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, yearning to breathe free, that wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless tempest tossed to me. I lift my land, my lamp beside the golden door. And that's what America means to this guy. And when I think, when I think what's, what, what, what our president and his minions are doing to this country, it just drives me absolutely frantic. I'll survive anything that can happen in Connecticut. At least it, that can, it's got to happen pretty soon if it's going to happen, because if it's going to be 10 years from now, I don't need to worry about it. But the, it's almost like on the brink of war. And if you're worried about your taxes, you want to think about what a war would do to all of us. And as I said, politics starts locally. Every one of you, all of you, have the opportunity to speak up in the defense of our country. And you don't have to be a rocket scientist. You, you can't watch this gentleman and and, 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 and logically make excuses for them because whatever the reasons are, they, you, you know, I don't get all of this information from the Times. I watch him when he's on TV. So I'd like, I'd like to suggest that. I mean, these are my parting words for you gentlemen and ladies tonight. And a little off the record, but thank you for your time. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Think about it. Thank you. Any other public comments this evening? Okay, we'll move on to uh, council reports. Any council reports this evening? Mike Rowe, you were saying? Sorry. Nothing? Probably been quiet a couple of weeks. Right? Okay. Any council comments? Mike Rowe? Yeah. Just uh, you had mentioned that uh, Bill Knapp, Chief Knapp, passed away, but just for everybody to know that doesn't know him, he raised his family in town. Um, he he loved Weathersfield and would do anything for Weathersfield. He'd do anything for his family in town, but he also considered all of Weathersfield his family. So he would do almost anything for anybody in Weathersfield. So it was sorry to see him pass away. Thank you, Mike. Tony. Uh, two things, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we all know uh, what a, great organization in town we had that does a lot for us uh, in uh, Unico. They do a lot for the town. I just want to recognize two individuals in that group uh, who were just elected to national office there. Uh, Tom Vaughn was made the president of Unico National and Morris Boria the um, uh, general counsel for national. Both gentlemen are volunteers, not just there. They both sit, I believe one's chairman and one's vice chairman of our uh, Zoning Board of Appeals for their true volunteers and just want to recognize them for their accomplishments and their uh, new positions. Thank uh, you, Tony. No, number two, uh, I received a request from uh, Lisa Chase who forwarded me uh, Harford's tree ordinance and some suggestions. Uh, she was one of the people who was very concerned about what was happening at Brainerd Airport and you know, asked if we could follow up on it. Uh, I forwarded her stuff to town manager asking it be reviewed by the tree commission. Uh, Jeff has requested that this body, uh, not just one counselor asked that it be forwarded. Uh, it's, you know, it's the kind of thing, you know, I don't think the counselors are experts on this. 
I'm not saying we have to implement everything that's in the Hartford Ordinance. I'm just asking that uh, we consider just having our tree commission look at their stuff and see if there's anything we can do to enhance our, our ordinance. I'm not looking for this to be done overnight. I know it takes time. They have other stuff on their agenda. So I don't know if it could be handled under councilor comments or if it has to be made in the form of a motion. But I was wondering if the other councilors would go along with having the tree commission look at this and invite Lisa and the people from Hartford that were involved in this just come to give guidance to our tree commission so that uh, they can come up with what's best for our town and our ordinance. Like comments from other com uh, counselors or if they think that we need this in the form of a motion. I, I have no issue with, uh, I think it's a good idea to, to have the uh, tree commission look at that. Um, on, another, on another issue, um, just the, the event that was there uh, at the high school this weekend on the fields. It's the annual uh, uh, Winton Keen Bittner uh, Memorial. Um, it is a, a, a uh, incredible event that commemorates uh, three of our best and brightest who were lost on 9-11. Um, uh, Dick Keen, uh, um, Jeffrey Bittner, and David Winton, um, all who were uh, killed in the, in the towers and also uh, another individual from Staples High School. So Westport uh, has come up and it's, I think it's the 15th annual, very, very uh, nice event. It's a charity event and it's uh, uh, to raise money um, for uh, the foundation, which does quite a bit of uh, good work in our, in our town. So it, wonderful event, a um, lot of people from, from all over and it, uh, uh, there was a lot, of, a lot of volunteers who obviously put in a lot of time to make that um, event go forward but it's a uh, very nice event and it was 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 uh, a, a positive thing that we were able to showcase our, our new field um, for that event this year so good it was a good day a somber day but a good day like Ralph I don't know if we had to follow up with Tony on your comments about the uh, ordinance um, I would support it but Hartford's a lot different than Weathersfield when it comes to um, planting of trees. I know having sat in on some of those, sorry, George, I'll get closer. Well, you're coming through pretty clear. I'm, I'm satisfied with what I hear, Mike. I can hear you. Um, having sat through some of those Brainerd Airport uh, tree clearing uh, forums, I can't remember, but I think for every one tree taken in Hartford, 10 trees get replanted in uh, ornamental trees. Um, I mean, something like that probably isn't necessary in the town of Weathersfield. We have rich history of being tr Tree City USA. Um, but if the um, tree, our Tree Commission, Shade Tree Commission, or even Christian, our uh, tree warden, wants to uh, hear from the city of Hartford, I don't have a problem with that. I think it would be a good idea. Like I say, you know, I, I know it's an urban policy. They got, we're a suburban. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying we have to copy it. I'm just saying there might be stuff in it that we could use to enhance ours. And that's the only reason I'm requesting they go forward and uh, they at least look at it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not giving them a time frame. I'm not looking for something tomorrow. Okay. But, you know, something that it might enhance us one way or another on some one good aspect. That's fine. I mean, I wouldn't force them to look at it. I mean, you can give it to them if they wanted to get something out of it. But I wouldn't make it like a mandatory thing that they got to read through it and take advice from it but i mean it could be a good rule of thumb maybe they see some things that we don't have in there i don't want to put more bureaucracy on our on our committees though yeah i'm not looking to put more i'm just looking to see if there's anything we can utilize out of that okay any other council count um i am going to just take one additional minute on bill knapp uh maybe a bit of a personal Point of privilege, I guess. Uh, in 1971, our family was uh, held hostage in our home by a gunman who uh, broke in forcibly with intent to secure about a quarter million dollars from a bank my dad worked at. We were held hostage for several hours, and uh, my sister and I escaped. Some police officers were able to uh, exchange themselves later in the evening for my parents. And the situation deteriorated further at the end of the evening <clears throat> when this gunman had 
secured some revolvers from the police officers who attempted to get into the home to rescue my parents, um, including uh, former police chief Karen Gigas, who at the time was a detective, um, and Officer Warren, who was one of the other officers. Near the end of the evening, this uh, gunman became despondent, indicated he was going to take his life and take the two officers with him. And Bill Knapp, uh, who was a lieutenant at the time, was called because he was apparently the best uh, sharpshooter on the force at the time. Bill didn't like to talk about it. Um, about six years ago, him and I were having coffee, and he finally shared a couple of the details with me. He didn't like being recognized for it. He was a, <clears throat> a very humble guy who served as our chief for over 20 years. But uh, he told me that that evening he uh, was laying on the grass outside our house. There was about an inch of gap that he could see through the window under the curtains where this gunman was holding Karen Chigas and Warren. And uh, he had never fired his gun at that time in the line of duty. I don't think he ever did afterwards either, but um, <clears throat> he knew the lives of those officers was in his hands. Um, and he fired. He said, I looked and spotted the gunman between his nose and his lip, and I closed my eyes. I thought, listening to him that night a few years back, it was remarkable because he hadn't shared it with me in all the years I've known him. <clears throat> Karen Gajigas told me a few years before that that the gunman was able to get off two rounds despite the fact he was hit, and a bullet took the hair off the side of his head right by his ear before he could subdue the gunman finally. So I know I've shared this publicly uh, when I came back to Connecticut back in 91. Uh, at some point after that, I decided I wanted to serve the community in some way for that reason. And uh, Chief Karen Gigas is in the atrium with severe Alzheimer's. Um, my good friend Billy Knapp passed away this past week, and as Mike Curley said correctly, uh, a guy that loved this town, loved all of us, was not a political guy. Um, I know at 81 years old, he was on Facebook like a 16-year-old posting pictures and He's always chiming him in how much he thought my girls were real cute. And I've seen his post on almost all of us that Facebooked him. Uh, just a gentleman and a uh, great family. I'll miss him dearly. And uh, I thank you for letting me share that story on his behalf. Jeff? Thanks. Um, powerful, powerful. A um, couple of things this evening. Um, on your podium this evening is, uh, we've heard so much about it in the paper over the past month that the uh, towns are causing fiscal instability at the state. I wanted to give everybody uh, a list of the largesse that the state is uh, showering upon Weathersfield, all 16% of our education budget and about 1.5 of our general fund budget. Um, I, I, using the towns to as a, as the reason the state's going broke is just appalling at this point. Um, using the towns as the reason the state's going broke is appalling at this point, given the amount of aid we actually get. Um, so I'm gonna the list is here for the council members. You can see what we what we've received over the past uh, since 2010 2011. Although it has increased, our ECS uh, rate has never been higher than 16 percent of our total education budget. And you can see how the town aid, the non-education aid has uh, kind of bounced up and down over the past few years. Um, so I would ask you to keep that in your minds as you read these stories about the towns and their need to uh, get their act together. It's pretty sad. Um, another thing on financial management, uh, we've been awarded the Governor, Government, Government Finance Officers Association Award for fiscal reporting. Uh, congratulations to Mike O'Neill and his staff and the finance department for that. Um, that's a good annual award. Um, Cloverdale Pond, as George said, is wrapping up. I think it's an outstanding, it looks great. They gotta seed it and do some other stuff, but generally speaking, it looks real good. That that dam structure's not going anywhere anytime. <laughs> that'll never be, that'll never. That and the Colosseum in Rome will be the last two things on the planet. 
Well, the rain filled it up this weekend. It looked good. Yeah. Um, the tanks, the fuel tanks at physical services are done. They're doing training. So that project went off very well. Again, Derek and Sally and the coordination that they, uh, they've put into that project is, was huge. Uh, the Catone field is substantially done. There's some cleanup items, the nets and some other punch list items have to be done. Um, so that went well. Um, and that's where we are. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for the comments on the state, too. Agree. I have more, but <laughs> getting late. I, bet. Just, <laughs> I hate to say it. Just one quick question. You mentioned Catone Field. Uh, diving blocks, did you talk to uh, either anybody from the Board of Ed or Fred Bushy? Yeah, last meeting I read an email from Fred that they've been ordered. He does not have a delivery date, and when he does get a delivery date, he will let us know. And I have not heard otherwise. Thank you. I have not. No uh, follow-up. No. Very good. Okay. Dolores, anything? Uh, yes, I just want to say that um, the Democrats and the Republicans have endorsed slates for this local election. Tomorrow at 4 o'clock is the deadline for hearing from any minor party, which I haven't gotten, received anything yet. Um, and the election is November 7th. Thanks, Lars. Okay, we'll move on to council action. Um, item B1A. Motion to approve the resolution of the Town of Wethersfield uh, approving the issuance by the Public Finance Authority of Wisconsin of bonds on behalf of Mosaic. Second. A motion a second. Jeff, I know we have a guest here as well to answer any questions about this. Right, to answer any questions. Uh, generally speaking, uh, Mosaic is a nationwide company that's going to issue uh, bonds out of the Public Finance uh, Group out of Wisconsin to renovate facilities across the country. Um, there's roughly 10, I think, in Connecticut, 10 or 11? We 10 states. 10 states. Um, so each local unit, in order to process the bonds properly, needs to kind of approve their use to renovate these buildings, and that's why we're here this evening, is to pass a resolution saying we don't have a real problem with the use of these bonds. Um, Andrea is here this evening. She can talk about the facility. She can talk about Mosaic and what they do. If you have any further questions. Councilors, council, any questions for Andrew? Jody? Just to clarify, these bonds have nothing to do with our finances. This is just us giving them the green light to do their work. Yes, we have no financial liability whatsoever under this exchange. Thank you. I hope you had a chance, I assume, to read the document, so it's fairly straightforward. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, we have a motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Extensions? Thank you. Motion passes. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Appreciate you taking your time. Uh, I think we have one appointment. To, uh, Councilor Rell? Uh, appointment to the Inland Wetlands and Water Courses Commission, Roger Musillo, 100 Meadowview Drive. Effective today, 9-5-17 to June 30th, 2020. Have a second? Second. Motion a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Position? Opposed or abstentions? Thank you. Motion passes. We continue to table the vehicle. There's no other business or bids. Uh, no ordinance or introduction, so we'll move to minutes. Motion to approve the minutes of August 21st, 2017. Second. Motion a second. Any changes, additions, modifications? Okay. Motion to pass the minutes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Public comment. No public comment. Mr. Young, round two. Good evening, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. I recently was driving by uh, Thorn, I was on Thornbush that runs along the Wilkes Farm, and I noticed that there's a new parking lot being installed with 
process stone. And it sort of didn't seem right. I mean, here you have an open space piece of property, and now you're putting in processed stone for a parking lot. I just wondered, is there more coming, like asphalt? No. I hope not, because I also was driving down another road called Goff Brook Circle, the bumpiest road I've come across in Wethersfield. I'm sure there's others. Very bumpy, very much in need of replacement. So, um, so we're not going to see pavement blacktop over there. That's just to what? I can talk to you after. Okay. Um, how are we doing on, on road work? We are in the summer, right? Or we were in the summer. We're now heading towards fall. Are we doing, has, is there road work happening in Wethersfield? Or is it uh, at, at a stall because of the, the budget business? No? We're all set. We're, we're going to do all the roads we normally do. I hoped someone would look at that Goff Brook Circle. That was a real bumper. Thank you. Thank you. Other public comment? Okay. I entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I told Tom. Uh